pronounced the most dangerous city in the world. In 1991, the murder rate of Medellin was 381 per 100,000 residents in a population of 2.1 million. In the times of Pablo Escobar, drug lords lived like kings. Judges and policemen were regularly assassinated. The paramilitaries were invading neighborhoods and guerrilla was kidnapping innocent people. The city was brutal. But let's not focus on the unpleasant past of this town that everybody knows from the narco series. Let's talk about how the city has transformed from being the most badass place to the most innovative, top must visit destination and, economically speaking, the fastest growing economy on the continent. But before I take you to the city of Eternal Spring, let me show you the beauty of Antioquia. Buenos dias, we just arrived to the region of Antioquia. The capital of Antioquia is of course Medellin. So we started our stay in Antioquia in the beautiful colonial town of Concepcion. We had never heard about the village of Concepcion and we were not supposed to go there. But our friend, who lives and travels on a motorbike in Colombia, told us that we should meet him there. We were astonished by the charm of this little village. It was so colorful and peaceful that we stayed there for a couple of days. We were literally in love at first sight in Antioquia and its hidden gems. And what we loved the most was the attitude of the people there. Don't get me wrong, my Colombian friends from other regions, but Antioquenos are the most welcoming people in all Colombia, in my opinion, of course. After a four-day rest in vibrant Concepcion, we were ready to hit the road and go to another place. On our way to Guatapé, for sure you heard about Guatapé because one, this is well, like one of the most tourist spots in all Colombia, I guess so. Everybody goes to Guatapé if he goes to Medellin. We took the road, unpaved road, of course. The guys chose the most difficult one, as usual. <laughs> From Concepcion to Guatapé, we have like 30 kilometers of off-road and I can tell you that the views are quite insane. And today Tristan is coming with us. Tristan is a French Colombian photographer. The road from Concepcion to Guatape was a very short but intense ride. We had a 30 kilometers of pure off-road. The guys were in heaven as always. And me, guess what? This was the first time that I was really enjoying the ride and I didn't feel any fear. After one month of crazy riding Colombia, you can call me an off-road queen. Hey guys, so we just arrived to Guatapé. Uh, we are in a restaurant with this amazing view that you have just behind me. This is the most famous spot here in Guatapé, Piedra del Peñol. It's Monday just after Easter, so all the people from Medellin went back to Medellin and we can enjoy climbing this beautiful rock, Piedra del Peñol. We have 700 steps to climb, so wish us good luck. Guatape is a perfect gateway if you want to relax and chill out from the second biggest city in Colombia, which is Medellin. It is a very tourist place, but the astonishing landscapes will make you stay here for more than one day. Now it's time for us to go to Medellin, so let's hit the road and check what's waiting for us in Medellin. Houston, we've got a problem. We just hope that our motorcycle is not broken because this has no power even when we when Nico goes drives alone it doesn't have a lot of power going to the best viewpoint on, of Medellin San de Azúcar hopefully we can reach before the sunset Did you see it? 
Nico is without me. It was too hard for the motorbike. It's too steep. Look at this. Oh my god. Super steep. Oh my god. He went quite far. I don't see him. Peligroso o algo, no, 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 nada, todo muy bien. Guys, we arrived. We are not in Pan de Azúcar, but we are in Cerro Luna, so the mountain of, of the moon. Pan de Azúcar es ahí de allá. Ah, usted nos ha dicho. Sí, yo le dije. Pan de Azúcar es por allá. Sí, ah, no, ¿dónde hay la Virgen? Eso, pero aquí la llegan por todo el caminito por allá. Ta, 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 pero de repente ta, ta, ta. es mejor por allá, ¿no? No, no, aquí también es todo mirador. Ahí también puede. We are on the top of Cerro Luna, but we were not supposed to be here. Why? Because we wanted to go to the top of Panda Azúcar, but we got lost just a little bit. That's why we are actually here on the mountain of the moon, because Luna means moon. But we don't regret, you know why? Because of this. Look at this, this is the most amazing viewpoint in all Medellin. <laughs> there were some locals here and they invited us for a coffee. So we're gonna have a look and we're gonna see if, if this is for real. Como? Gloria. Gloria? Uh, entonces, esta gente de Antioquia está increíble. So we just met these guys and they just invited us for coffee. Of course, coffee is, you know, something to drink. ¿Cómo se llama? Colada. This is colada. ¿De qué es? This is from corn. This is not chicha, guys. Colada. ¿Hay leche? Hay leche también, ¿no? Con leche y harina de maíz. Azu milk and corn flour. It has, actually it has a lot of sugar, but they, Colombians love sugar, guys. If you come here, you have to say all the time, no sugar, please. If you are in Medellin, come to this place, come to Cerro Luna, because I've been just talking to Gloria and Luis Fernando. And if you want to sleep here, even in the house, because I think they have one small cabana, or if you want to sleep in the tent, you can come here and Gloria can you something believe me they have the most amazing view on all Medellin like we would love to stay here but we have to go tomorrow to Bogota and we have all our things in the hotel so we can't stay here but come to Cerro, Cerro Luna Colombia has amazing people would you offer a coffee at your home to a man that you see for the first time in your life? Probably not. But in Colombia, this is something very normal. We don't do it in Europe because we are too busy, too stressed with our own lives. We don't have time. But in Colombia, everything moves slower, even in Medellin. A lot of people ask me, how do we do that we meet so many people during our travels? Aren't we afraid of newly met locals? How can you be afraid of people who are inviting you to their home for a night without knowing anything about you? Hey guys, we just arrived to La Catedral, as you know probably from Narcos series from Netflix. La Catedral uh, is the place where the ancient prison of Pablo Escobar was built. So we are here on the helicopter pad. This is the place where the helicopters were taking off and it feels, it feels very bizarre to be here like but look at this. I wanted to show you the view that Pablo had from his prison. He had an amazing view on all 
Medellin. I have to tell you that he chose it in the right way. The other thing that's, that is left is the prison's tower. Nothing is left, as you can see. This place looks like this. La Catedral is situated on the outskirts of Medellin. For you to know, we don't want to be any part of narco-tourism. We just wanted to see this place with our own eyes. We didn't take any agency to go there, just us and our motorbike. After the visit in La Catedral, we were heading to the most famous district in all Medellin. Guess where we went? Starting the tour to Comuna 13 with our guide, who is a local from here. He lives here in this district. Okay. So Hola. this is Daniel. <laughs> if you are in Comuna 13, you should definitely do the tour with him. Hola, cómo están? Mucho gusto. Mi nombre es Daniel. Yo vivo acá en la Comuna 13. Yo les estoy haciendo el recorrido a estos dos maravillosa pareja. La Comuna 13 fue una de las más conflictivas a nivel mundial y en todo Colombia. Y hoy en día es una de las más recomendadas también por todo esto ya que el proyecto de escaleras eléctricas que nos regaló el gobierno han influenciado mucho a la transformación de nuestra comuna entonces hoy no hay peligro de nada sino que todo es alegría, paz y tranquilidad para los que quieran venir, bienvenidos siempre Comuna 13 today is a symbol of Medellín it is one of the most vibrant and vivid places in the city it is more associated now with graffiti, walking tours, fresh food markets live concerts and street art performances that you can see in every corner of the street. Seeing young people dancing and singing on the streets of Comuna 13 was very impressive. That is what I actually liked the most, because the art had a lot of significance in the transformation of this district. Medellín está conformado por comunas, alrededor de unas 16 comunas. La comuna 13 viene siendo la segunda comuna más grande de todo Medellín, dentro de la cual hay 32 barrios, una cantidad aproximadamente de habitantes entre 170 mil a 200 mil habitantes, lo cual abarca mucho espacio, ¿sí? pero la operación Orión y operación Mariscal, todo el conflicto fue más centralizado para toda esta zona. You should definitely visit Comuna 13 if you come to Medellin. This is a must see in Medellin. And you know, of course, Comuna 13 has a very violent past in the times of Pablo Escobar. Of course, it was super dangerous. But now it transforms totally. It is very well connected to the center. And it's amazing to see how it looks like. Be prepared for a lot of walking because it's all the time uphill. The sound is not that good, but you know, I'm afraid to film with my camera here because it's too expensive, so... And it doesn't feel very safe here. Like, you know, we stay in the most touristic zone, which is El Poblado, so all the... Usually all the tourists stay there. It's very chic. It's a, a bit bourgeois, this El Poblado. You have all the best restaurants, the most expensive shopping malls. And now we are in the center of Medellin and here it's totally different, like the people are different, you have all kinds of people here, you know, it doesn't feel that safe as, as in uh, El Poblado and it doesn't look of course that chic, so yeah, but it's crazy and you can see the movement of the people, you can see that this district is quite crazy, that it's living its own life. Guys, Prado, where we are here, is quite dangerous. Like, oh my god, the smell of marijuana all the time. Just five minutes ago, somebody wanted to steal from me. Somebody wanted to open my bag and uh, Nico saw him. Oh my god, this is the center of Medellin. So many people. 
taking drugs just in the center of Medellin. Like we just saw an old couple. The look was horrible. And they were just sniffing the glue, something like this. So yep. And I wanted to show you more what what's going on just under the tramway where there is this big market that we were just passing by. But yeah, uh, like the guy told me just don't shoot, don't shoot here. So I'm afraid, I'm just afraid and that's why we go back. Like that's enough of adrenaline for today. After one week's stay in Medellin, we needed some fresh air. And we found a tiny village called Venezia for a two-day stay before heading back to Bogota. Nico knew about Venezia because a famous pyramid-shaped mountain called Serotusa is situated just nearby and he wanted to see it with his own eyes. Guys, we just arrived to Venezia. It's not the Italian Venice, but still it's called Venezia. So this is the Colombian version. Uh, it's just 60 kilometers from Medellin, so we did a like two-day trip. It's our first day, and uh, actually this place we think that it's super local. All the tourists when they arrive to Medellin, they go to Guatapé, they go to Hardin. Nobody goes to Venezia. Hola. Colombia, mi país favorito. Tan lindo, tan querido. Fue una de las mejores experiencias de mi vida estar acá, viajar por este país maravilloso y vivir una experiencia única. Ir a los lugares donde poca gente va, conocer a la gente siempre muy acogedora. Eso fue una locura. Gracias, mi querida Colombia, por todo eso. This road is crazy. I love it, I love it so much. And these are the last days for us in Colombia. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm a bit sad because uh, we really wanted to explore that mountain there, far away. I don't know if you can see it. It's on 4,000 meters above the sea level. But we have no time because, because we have to go back to Bogota. The most important is to sell the motorbikes, of course. If you are in Medellin, definitely you have to take this road. Nobody takes it. And it has one of the best landscapes in Colombia. Hey guys, if you have any questions to ask concerning our travels, our lives, whatever you want, you can ask us in the comments below or in the community section where I did a Q&A post um, because I'm thinking of doing a Q&A vlog very soon. And of course, I hope that you liked this vlog. If you really liked it, you could show me some love in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, just do it right now. And congrats to all the people who guessed where we are right now, because the volcano that you saw just behind me in the previous vlog was Chachani from Peru, from Arequipa. Yes, guys, we are in Peru. Next vlogs will be still from Colombia, but in a few weeks, vlogs just from Peru. So stay tuned and keep in touch.